Hungarian folk tales. The Round Stone. Once upon a time, there lived a poor man. He had many, many children. Off he would go to catch a fish for the table, for they were very poor and had to eat. His wife would cook these fish for all the children. That's what they had to live on. Now, not far away from there lived his brother and his family. And very rich he was too. But he never helped his brother out. When there wasn't a bite to eat in the poor man's house, he would send to his brother in the name of God to let him have enough flour to make supper for the children. But he never got any. Once when there was hardly a scrap to eat for a whole week, the poor fisherman said to his wife he was off to fish and he wouldn't come back until his satchel was full. He sat down on the bank early in the morning. No matter where he cast his net, there was nothing in it when he drew it in, not even a fish as big as my little finger. <coughs> now dusk was on him and still no fish. The poor man grew very angry. Well then, he thought, that's it. I'll cast the net one more time and no matter what, I'll go home. When he pulled it out, well, it was as heavy as could be. Now then, said he to himself, there must be a huge fish in it. Indeed, he could hardly pull the net out of the water. Out it came, and what was in it but a great, big, round stone. Ah, well, said he, I'll take it home anyway. At least the children at home will be able to play with it. And home he took it. His children were still awake. They looked at the great, big, round stone and started to play with it. They couldn't go to bed. They were having such fun with the game. They rolled it up and rolled it down the room and screamed with delight because the stone was getting brighter and brighter. Look, wife dear, this is some kind of wonder of a stone. It's shining like a diamond. Dear heart, said she, it's a diamond for sure. So they quickly decided that she should go next day to show the stone to the king himself to see if he wanted to buy it for a lot of money. Up she rose at the dawning of day, wrapped the stone in a kerchief and set off to see the king. First she saluted the king in the proper way. She took out the stone and showed it to him. Now where did you find that, my poor good woman, said the king and was astonished. She told him that her husband had found it in the water. Then, my poor good woman, let me have it and I'll give you a thousand florins for it. Because he knew that it was a real diamond. The poor woman did not say a word. She just gave a little cough. Well, if a thousand isn't enough, I'll give you two thousand. And the poor woman coughed again and was so confused that not a word could she speak. But the king thought she wanted more. Listen then, my poor good woman. Would you think three sacks of gold would be enough for the stone? This time she didn't cough. She just nodded her head. Straight away the king filled three sacks with gold and even gave her a cart and a horse so that she could go home. Well, didn't she go home in great happiness? Or wasn't there great happiness at home too? Never again would they go hungry. Well then, dear wife, said the poor fisherman, we should weigh the gold to see how much we have. Right you are, said she. Now there wasn't a weight in the house. One of the boys went to see the rich uncle. What would you be wanting a weight for? Asked the rich relation mockingly. My father wants to waste some money, said the boy. Well, the rich relative had a great laugh at this. Here you are, son. Here's the weight and I'll come too for this is something I have to see, your father weighing money. So the rich relation stood, and all he could do was open his mouth and his eyes wide in amazement. Not even he had ever seen as much money all at once. Where did you get all that gold from? Hmm, the fisherman thought to himself, I'll have a little joke here. The king gave it to me in return 
for three cats. How could that be? asked the rich relation. Well, the fact is, brother, the king's palace is knee-deep in mice. So many that the king and the royal family cannot even eat their lunch or their supper. I heard of this, and while I was coming and going, I got three cats and brought them with me as a present for the king. It was as if I'd been given a reprieve. So delighted was the king, and he straight away gave me three sacks of gold for the three cats. The rich relation heard this and couldn't wait to get started. Well, up he went and called everywhere in the village, everywhere in the villages around them, and he bought every cat there was for a right handful of money. He packed them all into his cart and off he went to the king. What have you come here for? asked the king. Your majesty, I heard that you were in great need of cats, so that's what I've brought you. You mean in that sack there's nothing but cats? Let me see. The rich relation opened the sack. There were cats jumping all over the place. Cats to the right, cats to the left, cats everywhere. And you know what cats are like? They ripped and tore at everything. Dear heavens, what is going on here? Many cats, that's what. The king had him seized for playing such a trick on him. He threw him into prison, and for all I know, he's still in there if he hasn't been set free for catting the king. Hungarian Folk Tales The Slipper Tearing Princesses Once upon a time, there lived a king who had three daughters. Each of them wore and tore 12 pairs of slippers every single night. Finally, the king could not supply them any longer with footwear so he issued a declaration across the land. He declared that anyone who could tell him where his daughters wore out their slippers every night would receive a very attractive payment as reward. The king had a young lad who worked as a shepherd. As he was grazing his flock of sheep one day, he suddenly decided to visit the royal palace. When he arrived, he told the king his reasons for coming. Your Majesty, I shall find out where your daughters go every night. All right, go ahead, and if you are successful, you'll get a rich reward. The king sent the shepherd boy to sleep in the same room where his daughters slept. The lad lay down on the floor with his bag and stick and pretended to be asleep. It was around midnight when he saw an old witch fly in through the window. She produced some kind of cream or ointment which the princesses rubbed on their knees and arms. As soon as they were done, they all hopped on a broom, took all their slippers and flew out of the window. The shepherd boy watched carefully and finally he rubbed the ointment on himself and his stick. As soon as he was done, he whooshed right after the princesses, never letting them out of his sight. It wasn't long before the girls reached a silver forest where they all settled down to rest. In the middle of the forest there was a silver well with three silver goblets standing right next to it. The three princesses each had a sip of water. When they were finished, the shepherd boy collected their silver goblets and put them in his bag. He even broke off a silver twig from one of the trees. The twig rang out loud when he snapped it from the branch. The small princess was very frightened why are you so scared, silly? Nobody can follow us here. So after a while, they all got on their broomsticks and flew off. They finally reached the middle of the golden forest. There was a well made of gold with three golden goblets standing right next to it. 
Each girl took a sip of water. The lad even broke a golden twig from one of the trees. The twig rang out loud when it snapped from the branch. The smallest prince was very frightened. Don't be such a coward, there's nobody here. Who could it be anyway? They flew off, but the shepherd was still following them. They soon arrived at the diamond forest where there was a well made of diamonds with diamond goblets on the side. When the princesses all had their fill, the shepherd collected the goblets, broke a diamond twig, the twig rang out loud, and the smallest princess was very frightened. Stop being scared all the time, there's nobody following us. They got on their brooms and continued their flight. Suddenly a huge gate opened up before them from somewhere below the ground. Inside there were 12 young he-devils waiting for them, and there was music playing from the attic. The shepherd boy quickly hid beneath the table and he kept a close watch on everything. The he-devils and the girls started to dance. As the shepherd was watching a bit more closely, he noticed that the floor of the room was covered in razor blades. It was no wonder that the slippers of the princesses were worn and torn, since they were all dancing on the razor's edges. When one was torn to shreds, they just threw it away and put on a new one. When the 12 pairs of shoes were all danced to shreds, they sat down at the table. They all had a golden spoon and a fork to eat with. When one of them dropped her golden spoon, the shepherd boy quickly picked it up and put it into his bag. The other princess dropped her golden fork and the shepherd boy picked it up and put it into his bag as well. When the girls were finally satisfied, they all hurried back home. But this time the shepherd boy flew faster because he wanted to get home first. By the time the princesses reached the royal palace, the shepherd boy was finally laying in front of their beds, pretending to be fast asleep. He never even moved, the girls said. Look, he's fast asleep. Morning came and the shepherd went to see the king. The king asked him, Well, son, have you seen anything? Have you found out anything? I have, your majesty. I have seen things and I have found out things. At that point in time, the king summoned his three daughters and the shepherd started to speak. First, they went to a silver forest and here is the evidence. He produced the silver goblets and the silver twig. Then they flew on to the golden forest where they drank from their golden goblets. With that, he pulled the golden goblets and the golden twig from his bag. From there, they flew on to the diamond forest where they drank another cup. Finally, they stopped in a palace where they danced with devils and that's how they wore and tore all their slippers. In the meantime, they ate and drank too. One of them dropped her spoon, the other her fork. And here is the evidence, your majesty. Well done, son. The king ordered that the two elder daughters be locked up in the tower each night, gave his blessings to the youngest one, who married the shepherd boy. And that is how the slipper tearing came to an end. Hungarian Folk Tales Susa In the village there lived a wealthy farmer. He had barns and cellars and attics that were full of goods Plus, he also had a couple of hundred florins sewn into a sack. However, he also had a lazy, good-for-nothing, stupid wife who was truly useless. Each time the farmer was about to leave for work, 
he told Susa what to do. Go to the neighbour lady, see what she is doing, and do exactly as she does. So Susa walked over to the neighbour's house, where they were busy bleaching the linen. When she saw this, she went home, took her husband's boots and leather hat into the bleach and let them cook there. They must have been in there for a long time, because when she took them out, and she was about to take them to the stream for rinsing, they melted away in her hands. When her husband came home, he asked her, Well, Susa, what have you been doing all day? She told him what she had done, and the poor man had to give her a beating. Finally, he told her to pay more attention to the neighbour woman the next time. The next day, the neighbour woman was preparing mash for the pigs in a bucket. Susa saw what she was doing. She ran home, took ten sacks of barley flour and threw them all into the well. Susa was very proud of herself. She wanted to tell her husband how much mash she prepared for the animals. As soon as her husband came home, she immediately told him the story. Do you know what I did today? Mash, the whole well is full of the stuff. There'll be plenty for the pigs. What, are you out of your mind, woman? That's exactly what I did. So Susan was beaten once more and her husband told her that if she did this again, he would teach her a lesson she would never forget. On the third day, the neighbour woman was cooking cabbage with bacon. Susa watched her, then went home, sliced up a whole block of bacon, then she took the bits and pieces to the garden and placed them on the cabbage heads. At noon, her husband came home and saw his dog lying dead by the gate. He asked his wife, What have you done to this dog, woman? Why did it drop dead? The thief ate all the bacon I was preparing for lunch in the garden. That killed him. The man looked into the pantry. The bacon was all gone. He realised what Susa must have done and he beat her soundly. The man kept all his money in a leather bag under the bed, but he never told his wife, lest she should spend it all. He told his wife that it was an ogre. He scared her by saying that if she did something stupid, the ogre would eat her. One day a travelling potter came their way. Susa wanted to give him the ogre so she wouldn't have to be afraid any longer. But of course, she did not want to give it away for free. So she asked the potter how many pots he would offer in return. Somehow the potter guessed what must be inside the ogre, so he gave her all of his pots. Susa was very happy with the deal. When she was left on her own, she placed the pots on the poles of the fence. Finally, she wanted to arrange the smaller mugs as well, but there was not enough room. Then she found a long pole and started yelling. All right, you pots, stand in line so there is room for the little ones too. But the pots just didn't want to stand in line, so Susa smashed the pots with her pole. When her husband came home, he immediately saw the fragments on the ground. He suspected that something was wrong, so he asked, Where did you get these pots, Susa? Well, you see, I paid for them with that ogre of yours, so you could never scare me with it again. The man nearly had a fit, but he realised that his wife was mad. The next morning, he sent Susa off to do some reaping, so she couldn't cause any more trouble at home. Susa went out to the field with a sickle, and by 10 o'clock, she harvested three sheaves of wheat. She pulled them together and arranged them in a stack. She huddled up in the middle and fell fast asleep. Her husband waited for her at home in vain. This Susa has suddenly become so hard-working. I'm going to go after her before the work makes her sick. He went out to the field, but however hard he looked, he just couldn't see Susa anywhere. Where could she be? He was about to go home when he finally noticed the three sheaves of wheat. He walked up closer and discovered Susa snoring beneath them. It's then that he realised he had to get rid of Susa once and for all. He ran home and brought back a pillow full of feathers and a small pot of honey. He poured the honey all over Susa and then he covered her with the feathers. Susa woke up. She looked at her hands and feet and said to herself, Ah, uh... 
Her hands are like Susa's, her feet are like Susa's, but this is not Susa. How could this be? She just couldn't decide whether she was really Susa or not. Finally, she decided she would ask her husband whether his wife was at home. If he said yes, she is home, then she could not be Susa. If he answered no, then she must be Susa, without a doubt. When she got to the house, she called out loud, Listen, John, is your wife at home? Of course she is. What's wrong with that? That was how Susa finally decided that she was not Susa. She started thinking about who she might be, but she just couldn't find out the solution. So in the end, she completely lost her mind. Finally, she ran off and nobody has ever seen her since.